the first vehicle. Mera noor. A voice in distress was heard on that busy street of Metegalli in Mysore. It was that of an old man calling out to catch the attention of someone on the street. But he was evidently not getting any response. No one took notice of him. Mera noor. He continued to call out and started to walk faster. He crossed a busy street in a hurry. There was a postman carrying heavy bags full of letters on his shoulders. He was gasping for breath. His walk was almost a slow run. As the old man got closer to the postman, the postman started to walk even faster. The old man grabbed one of the postal bags and stopped the postman. The postman was annoyed at being stopped. He turned around to see who it was that stopped him. The postman was Satyanarayana. Satya put his bags down and looked at the old man with affection. They both needed to pause for a while to catch their breath before they could speak. Satya recovered first. How are you, Kadar Tata? Although he had not yet recovered fully from the exertion of walking fast, Tata spoke with a sense of sorrow. Mera noor, Mera noor, what is this? What kind of job is this? It is just a way to earn a living. <laughs> no, Mera Noor. For a life giver? What do you mean? Means of livelihood. What sort of country is this, my brother? Is it fit for humans to live? Tata's voice showed more anxiety. Tata, I am younger than you. I shouldn't be telling you this. But you are blaming the innocent. Let it be. Why have you come to this state? What are you saying, Tata? After all, it is a job. And it's a government job. I don't want to hear that. It is for people like us, the sinners, who have to do this manual jobs. You are learned. You are the son of a god. Who gave you this job? What happened, really? Tell me. His voice gradually expressed anger. It's getting late, Tata. Let me drop these bags in the post office. During lunch time, I will come to your shop and tell you all about it. Mera Noor. Remember, I will not drink even one sip of tea till you come. He then gave a hand in lifting the heavy bags onto Satya's shoulders. Satya went away quickly to finish his job. Tata went back to his bicycle shop and sat on a stool. White clothes, white beard, but Khadar Tata did not have a mustache. He was bald. One could easily tell that he was a Muslim. His neck was slightly crooked. He was directing the young workers in the shop to carry on the various chores but he himself was very preoccupied There were 5 or 6 bicycles in for repair and another 5 or 6 bicycles that were for hire The walls of the shop had oil stains The walls were dusty and had some picture frames with letters in the Urdu language There were a few pictures depicting the Muslim religion A young servant brought a cup of tea but Tata declined to take it By about 2 o'clock in the afternoon all the young workers left for lunch. Tata was alone in the shop. Satya walked in affectionately greeting Tata. Tata, may I know? Come, sit down. Tata, I know you are concerned and you are love for me. Let me tell you what happened. You know that I have been searching for a job. One of my relatives is a postal inspector. He was able to get me this job. I filled in the application forms and I got the job. I am paid 50 rupees per month. I work only 5 hours a day. It is called EDDA, Extra Departmental Delivery Assistant. Is this a permanent post? No. Thank God. Don't worry, Tata. If I am lucky, it may become a permanent post. Son, tell me, are you really doing this job wholeheartedly? Tata. Whatever job I have to do will come searching for me. Mera Noor, I don't want you to do this menial job. You have a greater duty to save the dying, to show the right path to those who need it. You should show Allah to this blind world. They have eyes but cannot see him. But we should not hurry. You are telling me not to worry? How can you carry such heavy weight? How long have you been in this job? One week. That means this July of 1962 is a very bad month. Do you go walking like this every day? Yes, I have to work at Metagalli and Ontikuppal branches. You mean you have to carry these heavy bags all the way from Ontikuppal to Metagalli? Poverty is a heavier burden, Tata. 
Tata was not listening. He was thinking of something else. These two had known each other for the past four or five years. Occasionally, Satya would come to the shop to hire a bicycle. Gradually, he learned to do some repair jobs in the shop. Khadar Tata's only son had once fallen very ill. He was admitted in the general hospital. Unfortunately, the doctors said that they could not treat him and send the boy back home. The boy had no hopes of survival. Satya came for an errand to the house and on seeing the boy suggested that he would give some vibhuti if Tata had no objection. He requested Tata to put the vibhuti in the boy's mouth. Under normal circumstances, a Muslim would not have accepted the suggestion of a Brahmin. Even though he had no faith in things like vibhuti, for the love of his son, Tata put the vibhuti in his son's mouth. Within half an hour, the boy was back to normal and started running about. Satya refused to accept any money for his services. In another instance, Satya met Tata at the local mosque while he was doing the namaz. Tata instantaneously had the vision of the moon and the star. From then on, Tata started telling others about Satya's miraculous powers. But surprisingly, instead of a feeling of reverence, Tata felt the affection of a grandfather towards his grandson. Feeling sorry that Satya had to take up the postal job because of poverty, he decided that he should help him in some way or another. He got an idea. Mirnur, I need a favor from you. Do you want me to leave this job? No. If you promise to do a favor, I'll tell you. Why this suspense? I already know what you want. Mirnur, you know the past, present and the future. I beg of you. I'm not going to offer you gold. I'm not going to give you cash. I have an old bicycle, a second-hand one. Please accept it without raising any objection. The heavy load like that on a donkey will be reduced. If I see you once more with this load on your shoulders, that will be the death of me. Tata, it is not as though I should not accept gifts from others. The time is not ripe yet for me to start receiving things from others. Whatever I receive at any time, I should be able to give it away in a form that is approved by the Shastras. At the present time, I don't have the arrangements to distribute such monies. Where is the question of redistribution? Whatever you do with it is your business. Do you think I will ask for an explanation from you on what you did with what you received? It is not so, Tata. For example, suppose you have inherited some ancestral property. What right do you have to sell it and use it for your own personal pleasures? How can I use it? Just like I receive from my ancestors, I should also be giving to my sons. True, the law enforces that policy. But what about the money earned by you, yourself? It will be then up to me and my wishes. I can do with it as I please. I won't be answerable to anybody. True, my guru has left me some valuable property. He has decided on how I should spend it. I must follow his instructions. I should not use it to support myself or my family. What does it mean? It means if your son survived from what I did, it is because of the compassion shown by my guru through my act and it is not because of my own efforts. The same law applies to any other act of welfare carried out by me. I am only an instrument in the hands of my guru. I have no right to enjoy its benefits. I don't accept this argument. Only if you leave, only then you can do your Guru's work. Yes, I agree that I have to survive. But it has to be from the efforts of my own body. While supporting myself from what I earn, I should be able to perform the duties allotted by my Guru. But how will you survive? I do possess the strength of the physical body. I can use it to survive and support my family. I do not need to use the special powers given by my Guru. I will be able to teach and carry on priestly duties. It does not need any special powers. With what I get from my personal efforts, I should be able to survive and enjoy any pleasures I want to. I do not have a right over any other single penny. What you are saying is very weird logic. It appears as if you are saying all this now only to say no to my bicycle. Have I ever lied to you before? No. That's all. My position in the world will change gradually. Really speaking, my position never changes. It will remain the same eternally. 
it is a different subject altogether not in thousands but in lakhs people will come to me all classes of people from beggars to kings murderers to innocents dull headed to scientists and ignorant to the vedantins all will come to me i will have to help them in different ways to show compassion i must do things for them i would need money then and i will be able to accept it then i will take from anybody and everybody and as a matter of fact what i receive will not be enough for the work i would have to do even then i will use my own earnings to maintain myself men may not be able to differentiate between what i earn with my own efforts and what i get from the divine powers given by my guru even then i would have accounts for every single penny that i receive I cannot and will not change my principle at any time tata These were the words of a king holding the staff of dharma Satyanarayana's serious statement held tata spellbound Slowly he recovered But Mira no you have blessed me can you not give me a chance to do at least one useful deed Tata I have got all your accounts with me I know of your charitable acts I also know of the money you waste You have already settled your accounts with me. I am not responsible for your wasteful spending. This reply was sharp as a knife. Tata kept silent for a while. Son, some of what I waste will be reduced. Please do me a favor. Don't say no. Tata came forward to hold Satya's hands. Satya shed tears at this kind gesture of the old man. Tata, if there is one like you in an entire town, why? in an entire city my work would proceed smoothly but i am not sure if i am that lucky tata paid no attention to the compliment son don't say no please don't say no please don't say no he kept on repeating himself and trying his best to touch satya's feet satya jumped up and embraced tata okay okay after a minute satya said but on one condition If you are definitely going to accept the bicycle, I don't mind any condition. He was very happy. I will definitely accept the bicycle. Tata's face blossomed like a flower. But every month I will give you some money which you should not refuse. Tata's face dropped. What sort of talk is this, my son? You will give me cash and I have to take it? Tata, I accepted your words. and you should accept my words and not refuse tata was cornered tata you have given the bicycle with extreme love and affection with no selfish motive you have given it without any desires for the results from your action i will accept it as the first vehicle in my life to tell you the truth vehicles in all the lokas move with my power In the future cars and aeroplanes will come to me to take me around but your bicycle will remain with me as long as I live I did not come to you to get it and you did not give it expecting any money for it so this will be your gift given with love what I am going to give you is not to repay for this bicycle but for an entirely different reason it concerns my act of discipline and i do not want you to spoil my discipline tata was moved by these words he felt that if he continued to be stubborn on this issue satya might get even more stubborn so he agreed to accept the money immediately he went in and brought out the bicycle tata it's already late for me i must go you gave this to me at the right time i will go to the post office now said satya receiving the bicycle He was about to climb on it but the seat was too high. He was looking for something to step on to help him to get on the bicycle. Tata came forward smiling. Mira Noor, when the workers return, I will get the height of the seat reduced. Please get on the bicycle now using my back for support. Saying this he bent down so that his back would be the step for Satya to step on to get on the bicycle. Satya looked surprised and used Tata's back and got on the bicycle and rode off. This made Tata very happy. He stood up and inadvertently touched his neck. To his surprise and astonishment, his neck was completely straight. Son of God, 
By the touch of his feet, he has cured me of my spondylosis. He shouted for everyone in the street to hear. Seeing his colleagues at work, Satya said, I bought a new bicycle. His co-workers scolded him. Satya Narayana, what is this? You have not even received the first month's salary. You already bought a bicycle? Taking a loan? You are so irresponsible. You must learn to respect money. It was a harsh comment and it hurt Satya. Satya could guess now what sort of a reception he was going to get at home. In the next two or three weeks, he learned the intricacies of the work. His duty officially was only to pick up the bags and drop them off at the other branch of the post office. To extract more work from the temporary employees is the norm in government offices. Higher officials usually hire fewer workers than needed. The full-time staff do their best to complete their work. But when they cannot finish the work, the regional officers hire temporary workers and try to extract work beyond the call of duty from them. This extra work in course of time becomes routine work. Some officials find it easy to get the extra work done, but some show authority in extracting the extra work. This involves threatening the worker with dismissal. This is really the effect of karma from the past births of these workers. There is no law or principle behind this rule. It is one of the unlawful acts that man has got accustomed to. The one who comments on this as something strange is one who really does not know reality. He does not understand that it has been going on for a long time and that in course of time, wrong actions get accepted as right actions. Under these circumstances, Satyanarayana worked as a temporary postman. Satyanarayana was special to those who had faith in him, but he was merely Satyanarayana the postman to everyone else.